guys welcome back to the channel if you're new here i'm anna and i'm a little bit spooky and today we're gonna be talking about blue eyeshadow again i know but uh next edition in my eyeshadow made easy today i'm back with another blue eyeshadow look technically two blue eyeshadow looks in this one and we're focusing on more of a cooler tone approach today i'm um, using blush tones with blues so in this video i'm gonna have two looks to show you one's gonna be real sped up quick breezing through just showing you the shades i use and the other one i'm gonna kind of talk through a little more because we get a little more experimental with that one have a little more fun and in that look we'll be using a denim blue and some peachy pink tones the other look is this one that i'm wearing right now which is definitely more of a blush shade with a traditional old school navy blue in the outer v just to show you some color combinations and different ways you can kind of take your blue eyeshadow look so if that interests you just go ahead and keep on watching but before you do don't forget to like subscribe and comment down below let me know some more uh, color combos you would like to see and have a little deep dive in and explanation of a little color theory let me know down below and without further ado let's get into this video Okay, so today we're talking about blue eyeshadow once again, and today we're going to be focusing on the blush tones and cooler blue tones. In the previous video, we did the orange and the more teal type blues, those kind of greeny blues, and really focused on discussing color theory a little bit more in depth. In this one, we're just going to kind of get down to the makeup itself and we'll discuss a little color theory and so in the first edition of this we focus more on the bronzy side of things and warm tones such as these that you can find in the nude collection nude mood from ColourPop shades like this and we kind of talked about using colors more akin to this with the more teal blue incorporating like an orange transition shade blending into some more bronzy shades to make it feel a little more native to one's skin tone making blue kind of work universally for the most part on uh just about anyone's skin tone and using that bronzer shade as a way to kind of marry it into the skin this one we're focusing a little bit more on those cooler tone families so i want to show you a few more options of shades that you could go for now if you didn't want to go pinky blushy kind of or mauve like this you could always just go in with some taupe shades like this from the uh that's taupe palette or just these nice simple taupe shades will work just beautifully in the crease and pair really well with navy blues or deep blues any kind of cooler blue that you want to use i think these will be really pretty and will still give you that give you that nice flow into your skin tone now um to me taupe these taupe shades are definitely work better for the cooler complected people uh, out there like blue eyes kind of grayish hair ashy hair pinky undertoned people something like this is gonna suit you a little better than maybe those bronze shades but in the last video I do show you that you can make those bronzy colors and those warm orange shades and blue work across the board for anybody to me that's a more universal way to do it but if that isn't your vibe you don't like warm tones that's where this video comes in and you could definitely use shades like these mattes within this palette to create that look or you can move over into something more purpley like what is found in the making mauves palette these shades would be beautiful with navy blue or just a deep cool tone blue denim blue this is a great direction to go and for this look that i'm wearing currently i went in with blush crush which is these more pinky almost pillow talk vibe shades mixed with a navy blue and I use a very deep navy blue and it kind of almost takes on a little bit more of a purple look very very blushy in the last video we talked about how bronzer is kind of that saving grace product where we use our bronzer that suits our skin tone the best to blend all those shades and make them flow into the skin truly as a transition and in this one I want to focus more on like a blush shade and that to me will make these kind of more blushy tones flow better into one skin tone and of course this does work for any skin tone and any complexion out there it really just comes down to your personal preferences and adjusting things to your undertones I decided to go really cool with it today and in the other look because I got more questions about that than I did necessarily about warm tones because I feel like there's less content out there for cooler complected looks right but anyways, the saving grace of a look like this for anyone across the board to make it work for you will be your blush shade. Now, I chose a very mauve blush for both the looks in this, kind of a cooler tone blush. But what you can always do is take that blush and come right around here and then let that flow into 
the rest of the skin and just make it feel really much more native and like it belongs to on your face if that makes sense and keeping things tonal throughout the look creating the whole composition not just focusing on the eyes itself but making sure to incorporate those transition tones throughout the rest of the face and in this look we used a shade like this now if these types of shades don't flatter you you can always go with more of a peach warm tone shade your blush shade can truly be up to you and that can be the same applying to the transition like this is just an example of using you know the uh blush mood or you could go in you know with the mauvey shades but if these colors truly don't flatter you those really super cool tone ones that's when you can go with something more like the nude mood palette where these aren't extremely warm but they are still kind of warm a little more peachy this would be a great way to go and take a peachy blush and bring that through the transition you know something like this white peach shade from elf would be a great option just something in this kind of color store color family or even the CoverGirl Instant Cheekbones in Sophisticated Sable, I think is a very nice, more neutral option that pair nicely with a more warm or cool transition. This will just be more of a neutral middle of ground type of blush you could use to ground the look and bring that through just right here to marry things in. So yeah, that is what we're up to today. I hope I explained that well enough. And I just really do want to keep emphasize that these kinds of looks, this is based in color theory and theory is just a theory. There are no actual rules on how to do this. This is truly just up to you. And I'm just kind of giving you just a tad of guidance. It's kind of just my guidance, my viewpoint as a makeup artist, as someone who's worked in the makeup industry and as someone who has studied art theory or color theory and art, as someone who has a background in that kind of thing and working with colors and pairings and graphic design and just design in general. This is just kind of things that appeal to me and kind of work in my mind of how, how I apply color theory rather. But I want you to keep in mind that this is all very, very subjective and it's gonna be truly comes down to your personal preference and your undertones and the colors that you like and how you like to make them work. These are just some loose guides and to give you some ideas. And if there's a color that you want to wear that's just you're struggling with, that's where I'm coming from. I just want to show you a way that you can make those colors work for you. So this video will be focusing on more of a denim blue and a navy blue and pairing it with some blush pink peachy tones. And like I said, if you have a warmer undertone, you want to go a little more peach with your transition shades and your pairing shades, and you can still make that navy blue or that denim blue work for you. You're just going to want to tweak the undertones of the shades you use and the depth level of those shades to work for your particular skin tone because none of us are exactly the same. There's no exact formula that's going to work across the board for everybody. Things will always have to be tweaked and played with and kind of experimented with to make it work for everyone. And this is just an example look. The other look is just an example look to show you some color pairings. But that being said, I just want you to know that this is gonna be totally up to you at the end of the day and what colors you think look best on you. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to uh, give you some ideas. So let me know down below if you wanna see a look using blue that truly is just full on peach in the transition and warm but not going into those ready brown shades. Do you want to see one that is truly just focusing in on shades like this in a nice warm peach? Because today my looks end up getting a little bit more pinky and cooler than I was intending. So if that is something that interests you, let me know in the comments down below and also let me know if there's any more color pairings that you're curious about, you would like to see a way to make them work, or just a color in general that you find troublesome. Let me know in the comments and we will deep dive in it and try to find a, a way to make it work. The next edition of this is going to be using gold shades and how to make that work on cooler skin tones and warmer skin tones and talking about the differences in between. And maybe eventually we can get some dang models in here. If Delta settles down, maybe that can happen. <laughs> Let's go ahead and get into that first demo showing you how I create the first look in this video and then we'll move on to a nice sped up quick video with just some nice music and showing the shades I used to create this look as well as a added little bonus look in there. So yeah, let's go ahead and get into the demo and hopefully I explained myself well enough. Sometimes I feel like I don't get my point across <laughs> or I get the point across too many times and don't know how to edit it down. Anyway, let's go ahead and get into the demo. Okay, so today 
We're going to be continuing our How to Wear Blue Eyeshadow type of series. And this one, I want to show you more of a pinky rosy transition shade and how to do the blue eyeshadow for more of a cooler undertone. Like, are you just like cool tones and like to wear them? I wanted to show you kind of an alternative instead of doing like the orangey shades through the transition to make it flow into one skin tone, which is objectively to me kind of, or subjectively rather, the easiest way to wear blue eyeshadow. And I will link my video where I go into all the details and color theory in the eye about blue eyeshadow. But today I wanted to show you doing it with a more pinky kind of color story and a little bit more of a cooler blue, a little less of a, a teal subculture vibe and a little bit more of a softer, somewhat close to what I did in my Love Witch kind of tutorial, which will also be linked in the eye. It's close to that, but we're going to go a little bit more cool tone in the crease and bring in some kind of softy, soft, more rosy pinks and maybe a little bit of a brighter pinky peach. We're going to play a little bit. I don't have a strict game plan, but I just want to kind of demonstrate another look for you within this series. And the colors I'm going to, I'm thinking of reaching for are both from Rebel Rouge Labs palettes. You can, of course, create this with any brand that you want. I think from the Losing My Religion, I just kind of, I pulled this one just because I wanted to use the shade doll parts potentially as a deepening of the crease shade. And I'm going to go ahead and swatch all these shades side by side. Can you kind of get a vibe for what I'm going for? And you see, this is kind of a mauve, dusty, mauvey rose shade. So I thought that would be kind of neat to pull in to cool things off a bit because the pink that I am planning to work with is just a little bit vibrant and uh, peachy. The rest of the shades we're gonna pull is from the Gods and Monsters palette, and I'm thinking this for our transition shade. It looks so vibrant on camera, <laughs> like I can see it glowing in the viewfinder. But let me go ahead and just give it a little swatch so you can next to that shade. See, it is quite bright, but I'm gonna I'm gonna create something here. We're gonna marry them together. And for our blue, I'm gonna go with more of a denim cooler blue shade which is called dark paradise from this palette it's a very kind of is a dark but very metallic denim it, it's really pretty it's a little bit more blue than what i used in the other <laughs> blue eyeshadow tutorials it's it's different trust me so i'm gonna go ahead and swatch that here you can see it's very just a true nice denim type of blue and i think it just pairs so lovely with these shades and i don't know i'm i'm feeling a little inspired okay and possibly to deepen things up, we might go in with Macabre, which is a really deep, a little bit more of that teal blue type of color. So that's a potential shade we may reach for, maybe on the outer corner, just for some depth. And then we also have the shade Dauphine, which is this powder blue, or kind of a soft baby blue shade. And I might throw that in there too. I don't know, because I really like it. It's just a nice pastel blue. Very... I'm really inspired by Gucci ads apparently lately. So I'm really enjoying this color story at the moment. And I know this is a, probably more of a springy color story, but I think it could be pretty for transitioning into the fall times. Cause right now, you know, we're in that late summer and I've been doing a lot of warm looks lately and I wanna do something just a little different and play. First thing I'm gonna do is start with that shade doll parts into the transition. And I'm gonna take a fluffy brush first I'm going to start with it and then go in with the peachy shade and see how it goes. And, you know, I'm going to do one eye on camera to save time. All right, so let's take doll parts. I have already primed my eyes, by the way, with the Sigma Eye Base, and they're not set down. I'm, I'm just experimenting. I also have some really dry skin today, so let's just, uh, don't judge me on my, my flaky skin. All right, so I'm going to take that on the fluffy brush. I'm going to kind of concentrate a little bit more into the crease. I just want to go ahead and get that on there. And this is a very kind of almost a sculpty shade, but it has, it's like a, if you took a contour shade and made it rosy. <laughs> you know what it reminds me of? NYX Blush and Taupe. So I'm just going to take that kind of, let that sit right there in the socket line more than anything. I'm not going to go too terribly high with it, but just let it kind of flow out. And then I'm going to clean that off. Same fluffy brush. It's a Sony Kashuk, uh, just fluffy brush. My letters have rubbed off because I reach for it so often. So let's jump over to this palette, which is God's Monsters. If I can find any kind of dupey type shades, I will link them as well as these palettes in the description box just to give you some ideas of like, the color story I'm, you know, working with here and some other alternative palettes you could look at if you choose. 
but I personally would highly recommend the Rebel Rouge Labs palettes. They're beautiful, they're not too terribly expensive. Indie brand and the owner is incredibly nice. She's a lovely person and I just enjoy the brand immensely just as a whole. So I'm gonna support them. I'm all right, let's take Saint Honoré. Honoré. Honoré? No, jeez, I just Googled how to say this. Honoré. Honoré. This is the patron saint of baking is what I read, but it is a very nice peachy pink. And we're gonna just lightly tap into it, just a tad. And I'm gonna start to kind of just come around a little bit higher into that transition and let that flow into doll parts. Previous shade, just like that. But again, with these videos, the, the product itself isn't the most important part. It's more just about the color pairings. And I just wanted to show you that you can do something different, not just have to do the dark or the, the orangey shades when you wear brown or wear blue. You can wear a variety of tones paired with blue to make it work. It's all really just about that transition that can frame the blue and kind of help it flow. This thing is just blue is just kind of abrupt. That's why it's hard to work with. It's not necessarily a tone that's native to one's skin tone. And even with me having like some self tan on today, this is still gonna work. This would definitely, I mean, honestly, from a makeup artist perspective, this would be a color story I would gear towards someone with cooler undertones, pinky undertones in their skin, blue based undertones. There is a lot of wiggle room with that type of thing, but just ideally, that's who I would immediately want to apply these kind of colors to, but you can make them work on a multitude of skin tones. I think maybe just the super olive skin tones, it might not would be the most flattering because it would compete because these shades aren't as quite as native to the complexion. But I mean, the depth level of the skin is not so much the challenge as it is just the undertones of the skin is gonna be what determines what's the most flattering as far as this goes. Like if you have a much deeper skin tone than me, which isn't hard, uh, <laughs> I would just say take the your transition, sh transition shades and go just a depth level down and just deepen them up. Go for something a little bit more richer, a little darker, but the undertone's kind of similar to this. It, it'll translate the same, just work better for a deeper skin tone. You just have to compensate for the depth levels. That's the, gonna be the only difference. Cause this look can look absolutely beautiful on a, a good a good portion of people. But again, like I said, I don't think that uh, the depth of the skin tone is really gonna be that much of a factor as it is the undertone. And you can always just deepen up the eyeshadows and go with something a little more vibrant or deep, rich to balance it out. Uh, the Jackie Ina palette has some great shades that you could use on a deeper skin tone to get the same kind of effect. And the blue, I think like this blue that we have pulled here is is pretty vibrant. It can work across the board pretty well. Let's take just a little bit more of that pink. But yeah, now that I'm thinking about it, the Jackie Ina palette, if you wanted much more pigment and vibrancy, that would be the one to go for. Okay, so there's that soft rosy pink. Also, I think like some of the, the shades from the Divine Rose palettes from Pat McGrath come to mind quite a bit with these kind of colors. Um, Maybe even a little bit like a Naked 3, Naked Cherry color story would work as well. And then have the blue just be a pop of color mixed in. You know, and you can pull the blue from whatever palette or just this eyeshadow single, that kind of thing. You know, think outside the box. You don't have to go stay strictly to a palette. Now that we have that down, we may go back and deepen things up. We'll see how it goes. All right, now I'm gonna just grab this little Morphe brush. This is a flat brush. It's really good for applying shadows to the lid. One, two, four. And I'm gonna jump over into our dark paradise shade, which is that vibrant denim metallic blue right here. And we're gonna start to lay that down on the lid. Kind of starting about the middle. So I haven't decided what I wanna do on the inner corner. That is freaking gorgeous. That is a beautiful shade. I'm just gonna put that on the majority of the mobile lid. That's so pretty. That is really pretty. So I'm gonna keep this look a little bit softer. I don't, I don't know, just, Something kind of pretty. Build that onto the lid that the shade is building so easily. <laughs> Damn, that is so pretty. So pretty. Like, it's not a shade that I would uh, typically reach for. So, this series is also getting me on my box, too. <laughs> my box. That's what she said. All right. Now, I'm going to take my cob, which is that deepest blue right here, which is not quite the undertone that I was 
have in mind for this look. It's, it's, I would think a navy blue would look really pretty with this, but there's something about this one with that slightly more green undertone. I think it's going to look kind of cool, a little bit different, a little more unexpected, but definitely a navy blue type of color would be beautiful to deepen this up with. Like as a blue with a much more cool undertone to it. So we're just going to take this out here because this denim shade does have, I don't know, it's a, a little bit more of a nuanced shade. I feel like this color is just going to look pretty with it. I'm just going to focus it right out on this outer corner, deepen it up, create a little bit of movement definition on the lid. And I'm using a Sigma Detailed Diffused Grease. Diffuse right out here and soften out where that blue ends and meets with our transition shades. Again, you can go back with your deepest transition, which in our case is doll parts, and run that just once again through the socket line just to create a little bit more depth. You don't have to go with such a mauve shade. You could go with something a little bit more rosy and a tad more vibrant would be really pretty too. Maybe one day I'll have models in here. One day. Okay, let's go back a little bit more macabre. I feel like I lost some of it right here. Instincts will look like this is to make it kind of spooky and dramatic though. But if you didn't deepen up the crease quite as much, you could definitely make this a little bit softer, more everyday-ish. Everyday-like. And there we go. I think that looks really pretty. You know, it's not a complicated look. It's really truly just about your color pairings. And it's not hard to. The placement and everything is fairly simple and straightforward. It's just more about pairing the colors that kind of flow together and create a vibe. But I just really wanted to show you like a nice cool tone blue look because the other one we did was so warm. <laughs> just so, so warm. And again, all this is very much to your own discretion and your own preferences. You can tweak, change, and do what you want and what feels right for you. <laughs> I'm, these are not rules. <laughs> this is just purely like a, a bit of color theory. And again, just a theory. <laughs> so for the inner corner, just to uh, brighten things up just a bit, I'm gonna take the shade Decolleté, or Decolletage rather, this is Decolletage, and it is a nice light champagne. Not cool, not warm, just very neutral in between type of color you can pull either way and we'll put that right there on the inner corner it's kind of pearly and i think that just brightens things up and brings a little bit of light into the look and this shade is from gods and monsters and there we go i love that now let me know if you would like to see a look using this shade right here called flannel this vibrant gorgeous just electric blue let me know because I would be happy to do a look with it. Or any of the shades that catch your eye, let me know. <laughs> because I'm just, I'm having fun with color right now and just kind of playing, being a little more creative. What I'm gonna do now is go finish up the other eye, do the rest of my face, and um, we'll be back for lower lash lines and finishing touches and to wrap things up. So yeah, see you in just a minute. All right, just finished the foundation portion and the uh, Concealer, all that. I'm trying a new foundation today that I want to mention real quick. This is the Kosas Tinted Face Oil that I have on, and so far, I really like it. Now, I just put it on like maybe 30 minutes ago, but I think it's so pretty. Like, it's really nice. I really have some dry patches, and that's just my skin right now because of a skincare treatment I'm doing. Man, this was easy to do and it was just went on so fast. I think it looks really nice on my skin. I even powdered a little bit over it and it's um, looking pretty good. I'm pleasantly surprised. I expected it not to work for me, but I had a little sample of it. So I was like, you know what, let's give this a go because it was too deep for me to wear on my normal skin tone. So I was like, I'm, I'm kind of going through all my, my foundation samples that don't really match me when I'm ghosty and <laughs> while I have self tan on, I can make them work. So I'm going through like testing some out and I, I'm pleasantly surprised with that one. It's sitting really nicely on my skin. I might have to buy it if it if it holds up well enough throughout the day. I might have found a new favorite product. Anyway, back to the eyes. I just was pleasantly surprised and got a little distracted there by it. On the lower lash line, I have put a little bit of this Marc Jacobs eyeliner, highlighter in, I'm really not sure of the shade, but it's kind of a, deepened lavender lilac-y metallic shade. It just gives like a soft definition under the eyes, but it's not a super over the top like pile of color eyeliner. So that'd be something nice to kind of balance and give a little definition. And I just put like a little bit of black eyeliner like right in the tight line on the upper lash line and into the lashes. No actual eyeliner eyeliner. I just didn't want it. I feel like that would just be overkill with this look. I don't know. It just wasn't 
feeling it. I'm not a huge eyeliner person as it is, so. Lower lash line, I'm gonna take a little pencil brush here. This is from Shop Miss A. I think I'm gonna take a little bit of doll parts first just to kind of get things going. And I'm gonna focus that right underneath and blend with that eyeliner. This is a good little pencil brush. It's so pointed and small. It's quite precise, but blendy at the same time. It's a really good shape. I enjoy it. It's from the uh, Paw Paw collection from Shop Miss A. And let's take a little bit of cob now on the same little brush and kind of concentrate it real close to the lash line, kind of on the outer corner. Just to let that flow up into the upper eyeshadow. So not always is this um, kind of denim blue tone the most flattering on me, particularly because I have a bit of green in my eyes and yellow, kind of that um, sunflower business in my eyes. So it kind of can compete just a little bit, but I'm um, you know, balancing it with these rosy tones does make it a little bit more wearable on me. But it's mostly my challenge with blue eyeshadow is them competing with my eye color. Because my eyes are quite pale and blue, but they're also have green in them as well and yellow. They can get kind of washed out looking. and look kind of gray in comparison to some eyeshadows and they just aren't always the most friendly. So I find blues with that little bit of green teal in them to work really well for me and those warm tones mixed in. But I think, you know, pairing this rosier tones with it is also working really well and kind of just making things flow and look a little more cohesive. It's basically taking that concept of doing the you know, blue and pink eyeshadow, but doing it in a more soft way, a little bit more like what I would think of as a little more refined rather. Because you can wear vibrant colors and do all this stuff and do it in a way that is a little bit more elevated. It doesn't have to look like Instagram makeup, you know? Which is nothing wrong with looking like Instagram makeup. I'm, I like that too. I do that as well. I just kind of moved away from it, I think. Like, I feel like I've outgrown it a bit, and I'm just more into, not necessarily editorial, but just uh, a bit more simplistic with the makeup, in a way, and a little bit more, I guess you could say a little more like a refined vibe. A little bit more mature, I guess. I'm keeping that kind of tight. I don't want that to blend down too terribly low, because blue on the lower lash line can also be quite a unflattering thing, it can make you look a little sickly <laughs> because, you know, blue under here is not something we strive for. We tend to strive to have bright, not blue under eyes, not darkened <laughs> under eyes. So if you struggle with darkness and blue under your eyes, I would definitely say, you know, skip out on the blue on the lower lash line and just keep it towards the top and just take your transition tones and apply them under here. Now I don't have blue necessarily under my eyes. That's not a, that's something I struggle with, but it can still give that appearance of that slightly sickly or just tiredness if you blend the blue down too low, whether you have that there or not naturally. But that's a concern and you don't, you want to really avoid that. Either keep it very tight to that lash line or just on the upper lash line. All right, now we're going to take a little bit of Saint Honoré. Honoré. I think it's Honoré. Kimmer, listen to the, how to pronounce it and pff, totally forgot. And I'm just gonna run that right here, just to soften that out, but I'm not gonna go too far. My eyes feel a little watery on that side, so it's not want to stick very well. Cool. The allergies have got me right now. My eyes are a little bit sensitive. I just got uh, quite sensitive eyes right now, just allergy prone eyeballs. All right, so I'm just gonna keep it at that, just something definition are there, but it's not like the star of the show or anything. And on that inner corner, I am going to take some more of Decolletage and focus that right there. Perhaps I'll take just a touch of Dark Paradise, which is the lid shade, and just pop it right on that center beginning part between the inner corner highlight and macabre. All right, now we're going to move on to the rest of the face real quick. And I'm going to start with my contour bronzer situation because I feel like that ties in to the eyes and it's kind of important to incorporate tones throughout the face and to make them all gives everything a very nice cohesive feel and for my bronzer contour I'm going to go in with the Filmstar Bronze and Glow from Charlotte Tilbury and because this one is kind of a more neutral almost cool contour bronzer I feel like it just will tie in nicely and just kind of flow with the look and you know if I did a more warm orangey 
I, I would go with a little bit more of a warmer bronzer. So we're gonna take this one today and I'm going to take it on a small brush. I'm just gonna take this little elf brush, elf and Charlotte Silver together. That's That kind of describes me really well. <laughs> Using a Charlotte Silver product with a dollar elf brush. We're gonna take the sculpt shade and just start to sculpt out the face like normal. Just however you prefer to do your bronzer contour type of situation. Okay, what I'm gonna do to make this a little bit more cohesive is I'm gonna take my blending brush, my original one, make sure it's clean. I'm gonna take a little bit of that sculpt shade and we're gonna come right here, like we did with the bronzer in the previous look, but this is a much more like cooler contoury shade. I'm gonna just focus it right here and let that kind of flow just a little bit into the transition. I think it makes things just feel a little bit more natural on the face when they appear in more than just one spot, you know what I mean? Like why wouldn't a tone like this flow into the eyes where there is a contour and shape and shadow and, you know, appear on the other parts of my face but not there. Does that make sense? <laughs> and this also gives a little bit more of a warmth through that socket line in case things were getting a little too purpley or too purely pink. I want it to be just a soft, subtle rosiness to it. And we may take a little bit more of our Vibrant Peach and kind of play it up and see where it goes. Now for blush, I'm kind of torn between two that I wanted to show you. So I might, I might go with a combination of both. But I have this shade called Vogue from ColourPop, which is this very pretty mauve rose, dusty rose tone. And then we also have Raw Honey from Melt that I think would be really pretty with this. And this has a little bit more of a warm sheen in it so I think that one would actually be a little bit more flattering today but something in this kind of color story I think would be beautiful to incorporate with this eye look just to give you some ideas yeah so let's take a little bit of raw first and see how that goes raw honey I'm gonna go into the more pinky side the more colorful side if you will and this is quite a shimmery blush so if you don't like a shimmery blushes these are not gonna be for you so the ColourPop one is much more matte. I do believe it is still available, but it's not the most unique shade in the world. You can find a okay, color like that virtually anywhere. <laughs> Whereas the uh, Melt one is a little bit more unique in my opinion. It brings just a hint of warm back in, a little life. Because that's one thing with going with a lot of cool tones is they can kind of just suck the life out of you just a bit. Even, you know, if you are very cool tone complected, it can still kind of just make you look a little bit undead. You gotta know how to balance it with a tad of warmth. It's nice to have just that little, like just a rosy warmth in there. Not necessarily like a peach or anything like that. And to keep things pretty tonal throughout the face, I'm gonna also take this shade right in the transition as well, just to make sure everything is very much flowing together. A sophisticated sable from CoverGirl would be really pretty with this but uh, just brings in those tones just around the eye as well and just gives everything, everything a just really nice cohesion. Right, and now we're gonna take the lighter side of this one that's a bit more of a highlighty type of shade. Run that right up here, kind of on the apples of the cheeks, on the higher peaks of the cheeks, but a little bit lower where I normally would highlight because this shade does have some pink in it too. It's more of a blush topper type of color. I'm just gonna take it right there. The reason I'm showing you the rest of the face because not everything just depends on what you put on the eye. It all has to work together and make a picture. You know, it's not all just about the one area of the face. You have to look at the whole composition and how things are going to play off one another. And for just a bit of highlight, I am going to jump over to the back to the bronze and glow and take the highlight shade from this because it is just a really pretty highlight shade. Very kind of just neutral. Not too dissimilar from the inner corner highlight. However, it just looks much icier with those blues next to it. And we could take that shade on the cheek as well. But I'm just going easy on the highlight because I am quite glowy today with the foundation complexion products. But yeah, I think that looks pretty good. Pretty good. For funsies, maybe we'll just take a little bit more of Saint Honoré and uh, run that through the transition one more time. It's a very very right here, just kind of giving that a bit of a glow out there. And so you can always go back and tweak things too, you know, with your eyes once you've finished your face. You don't have to be like, I'm done with the eyes, I'm done completely, let's not touch them again. Now you, you want to go back and tweak things and readjust, bring stuff back if you lost a little light 
for life in it. Same with if you do your face first. You want, might want to go back and adjust the blush, add a little more pigmentation, same with our bronzer. You don't have to lock yourself in. That's that's the main point I'm trying to make it. Yeah, I'm liking a little bit more Saint Honoré in there. Is this got elevated 80s makeup? Yes, <laughs> that there it is, elevated 80s. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, there we go. But it's a way to make an 80s looking color story updated and work for the 2020s. Oh god, I can't believe we're in the 2020s. I would just finish this look up with some mascara, which I'm going to do right now, and then we'll be back to do the lips and wrap everything up. Just give the hair a little zhuzh. It's uh, pretty wild today. And I tried to tame it with a curling iron, but I don't think it uh, tamed it too much. <laughs> so yeah. Alright, so for the lips, I have already lined them with Soft Spoken from NYX lip liner and what I'm going to do now is take 1995 from Pat McGrath which is a very kind of uh, chestnutty rosy very soft shade it's not super in your face pigmented type of color you'll see when I put it on the lips on me it pulls just a little bit kind of pinky but still has a bit of a brownie warmth in there it's a very much a 90s nude lip type of color and you see how it has a little bit of that mauve in there and then we're going to top that with Pat McGrath. Again, sorry, I just, these are the colors I thought looked good with this. Um, this is Naked Rose lip gloss in, from the Opal Lust. And this is a rosy color, but it has a bit of a warm kind of reflect in it. Golden reflect. I think it just complements it perfectly. And there we go. That is the look finished. What do you guys think? Is it elevated? 80s glam? Yes. And it's also another way to blue, wear blue eyeshadow, especially you have a cooler undertone or kind of ghostly kind of pale like me and yeah <laughs> I really like the way this came out honestly it's like soft sophisticated bubblegum colors <laughs> if you will I think it's just it's just a little bit restrained in a good way just a little bit more mature grown-up looking kind of classy it's a classy way of doing it right <laughs> anyway Thanks for hanging out with me today and seeing how we create this look. And again, if you have any tips, tricks, ideas, things that you want to share about how to wear blue eyeshadow or a tricky color, if you have tips and tricks, let us know in the comments because I am all about it. And I want to share all my little tips and tricks with you for wearing more trickier colors on the eyes and how to make it just feel like it works. And of course, in the eye will be a playlist called Eyeshadow Made Easy. And that is going to be where I put all these types of videos showing you how to wear these trickier tones. And we are starting off with blue, of course. And I will have my first video that talks a little bit more about color theory in the eye as well. And another blue, couple blue looks maybe in the eye. So you can just see some variety and ways to rock blue eyeshadow. So yeah, that's it for today. Thank you for hanging out with me and I will see you guys in the next one. Stay safe and stay spooky. Bye now.